This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we're going to talk about making the enemy wet in Baldur's Gate 3. Let's get to it. So recently I put out a build guide called the Storm God build, and that whole entire build is focused mainly around doing lightning and thunder damage. For those of you who do not know, when something is wet and you deal lightning damage to it or cold damage, it becomes vulnerable to those two types of damage, meaning that it takes double damage. This is insanely strong no matter what part of the game you are in. Early game, late game, doesn't matter. Well, in the comments of that video, I saw a bunch of people talking about how they are going about making the enemy wet and a lot of those are very, very inefficient. So today I want to talk about how you can efficiently make the enemy wet, maximize your damage, along with the different interactions with surfaces that you can use to help you accomplish this. The two simplest ways to make an enemy wet are use create and destroy water to create water on top of a group of enemies. This will make them all wet or you can throw any water container. So there's the water crafts and water bottles in the game. You can throw those and they will act as a grenade splashing water on every everything in a smaller area than the create and destroy water ability. There's two major downsides to this. One, if you use create and destroy water to create water, you are using up a spell slot unless you have that on an item. And then if it is on an item, in most cases, you are going to have to do a short or long rest before you can use that again. If you just have the ability to do it. So for example, clerics can create and destroy water. They have to use up a spell slot. This means one less spell slot for healing or anything else that you may need that spell slot for. Your other option is to throw a container of water. However, doing either one of these ways to easily get the enemy wet means that you are going to use up an action, an action that could be used to damage an enemy that round, which could be the difference between killing them and not killing them when you electrify or freeze them. So let's start off by talking surfaces. There is one surface that will make an enemy wet that doesn't involve you throwing anything, and that is a steam cloud. As long as an enemy stands inside of a steam cloud, they will be wet. If you create create water over top of an enemy or throw something that is a water container at an enemy, they will only stay wet for three rounds. Creating a steam cloud is pretty simple to do. You need a wet surface and then you need something that is going to create a fire surface. When you mix a fire surface on top of a wet surface, you get steam cloud. Note that this only works with water. This will not work with blood. You also cannot electrify blood. However, there is a way to turn blood into water. If you freeze blood, it then becomes water. So so you can freeze blood and then do whatever you do to create a fire surface on the ground and it will instantly turn that blood into steam. Three things that I know of and have tested that will turn water to steam are the alchemist fire, the fire arrows, and chromatic orb set to fire. So if there is a bunch of blood on the ground and you hit it with something that one either creates an AOE frozen effect like chromatic orb which will also leave ice on the ground and freeze all blood around it or you can just use ray of frost and aim at the foot of the person that you're trying to hit and this one's a little finicky because sometimes it will hit the person and not freeze the ground and sometimes it will freeze the ground and not hit the person but it is possible to do both you can freeze the blood underneath an enemy or a group of enemies this is effective because that means you can create water underneath of them and damage them in one turn and then in the next turn hit them with fire which will damage them and also create a steam cloud making them wet you won't get the fire damage on top of that but you also won't be just wasting a turn where you don't do any damage. Then the following turn, because they will be wet, you can hit them with either lightning damage or frozen damage to do increased damage to them. Now that you understand surfaces, let's talk about some quicker and easier ways that you can get the enemies wet that don't involve messing with surfaces. But keep in mind that surfaces are a way to make them wet using steam and make use of those when they are available to you. The easiest way to make someone wet is to just douse them with water. However, we want to do this without using up our action. That way we can use our action to cast a spell and maximize our damage potential. There's two different ways to go about doing this and both of them rely on one thing. Do not throw the water. You can place the water container on the ground from your inventory at a pretty far distance from yourself. Then all we need to do is break that water container and that will explode and get all of the enemies around it wet. If you cast a spell either directly on the container or hit the container with the AOE of a 
spell, it will explode that container, making all of the enemies in the area wet. Keep in mind though, from what I can tell, the damage gets applied before the wet status effect gets applied on the enemies. This means you won't get the increased damage effect of this until the next turn, but it does maximize your damage, allowing you to use that action to wet the enemies as well as damage them in a single turn. Then the follow-up turn, you can hit those same enemies with a spell to do the increased damage because they will be wet for three turns. Also keep in mind that because of the way the damage gets applied here, if you do this and target a water vessel using a lightning spell, assuming that the water is going to be electrified, it will not be. The electrified is applied, vanishes, then the water breaks, then everything gets wet. However, the water will still be there on the ground the next turn, allowing you to electrify it next turn when you use a lightning spell. But I know what you're thinking. You're like, that's great, Fire Spark, but how can I do all of this in one turn to maximize my damage in a single turn? It is doable and you only need to use up a bonus action. You will need two hand crossbows. You will have to have two of them equipped because you cannot use the offhand action unless you have two of them equipped. Once you do have both of them equipped, you will have the option to do an offhand attack with a bonus action using your offhand crossbow. So in order to do a turn that would be maximum damage, you would start off by setting down a container of water near the enemies that you want to do electric or frost damage to. Then you would use your offhand bonus attack with your ranged weapon to bust that container of water. Once you have done this, then you can use your action to do a lightning or frost spell, getting the maximum amount of damage. And last but not least, for a little bonus tip, it is possible to use the shove action, which is a bonus action to shove a container from a high height in order to cause it to bust on a group of enemies, allowing you to use your main action to damage them. In order to know if it's going to be high enough or not, all you have to do is place your water container down, take a look at its hit points, it's probably going to have one hit point, and then use the jump action just to see if you were to jump down, if you would take at least one damage, because before you commit to the action, it actually tells you how much damage you are going to take if you make that jump. So hopefully now you are equipped with all of the knowledge that you need, no matter what situation you are going to find yourself in, to absolutely maximize your damage using a combination of surfaces and or water containers. And that is going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you all found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you'd be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.